Hi and welcome back to my another video. So in this video, I this is uh, episode three of the inorganic chemistry uh, part in my channel. This is Johnny. I'm Johnny. Yes. And then in this video, I'm gonna talk about the ions and naming of inorganic compounds. So basically, um, I will go slowly and explain the reason why these um, the ions are formed and how they are named. Okay. So I would recommend you to fully watch my episode 1 and episode 2 because episode 1 and 2 is about periodic table and it explains to you like how these ions can form and what are they so I would recommend you to watch them, okay? Go watch them if you haven't, okay? And if you have, so here we go Alright So what is the ions and how they are formed? So basically, if you knew the periodic table so well, um, you would know that a lot of elements, they're in some groups called, like for example, group 1, group 2, group 3, 6, 7, 8, something like that. Okay, they are scattered around the groups in the periodic table. So, what does it mean, these groups? This group means that there are that many electrons in their outermost shell. For example, sodium. It has 11 protons to begin with. So it means that, okay, so if I write down its electron configuration out, I know that the outermost shell has only one electron. Okay, so sodium is group 1A. Group 1. The thing is, or, um, okay, I'll talk about it later, but let's talk about chlorine for a moment. So 17 protons. So if I write down its electron configuration, I would recognize that the outermost shell of the chlorine has 2 plus 5 is 7 electrons. So that's why chlorine is in group 7A. Alright, so a lot of other elements will have mm, similar uh, ways. You know, they have some electron in the outermost shell. So why does ion exist? Because let me tell you something, there's a rule in, there's a magic rule in chemistry that say uh, if you get eight electrons in the outermost shell, then you are very stable in terms of energy. Like, um, how can I say, normally these elements, they do exist, but um, because the universe will tend to try to make everything more stable and in terms of energy. So basically they will try to get to the 8 electrons in their outermost shell. I call it the full octate. The full octate, okay? So with that being said, let's look at sodium for example. So it has one electron in its outermost shell. So normally, what would you do? Would you gain another 7 electrons or you lose these electrons? So you get 8. Of course, the answer is simple. Just have to lose one because it's easier to lose one rather than gaining 7 electrons. Okay, so when sodium loses this electron away, they're gonna have the full noctate here. You can see 2 plus 6, 8 stable octate okay octa means eight you know same thing can be said about potassium which is also in group one so it's going to lose one electron to become k plus of potassium ion just like the same way as sodium ions do okay so you can see other uh, examples i put here so magnesium and calcium is in group two so it would be more likely to lose its two electrons rather than just gaining six electrons. So it loses two electrons to become magnesium 2 plus, calcium 2 plus. We call them magnesium ions and calcium, calcium ions. You can also call them these uh, cation. Cation means positive ions. Okay. So in this way, aluminium, which group does it belong to? Group 3. 
Okay, so it will lose three electrons to become aluminium three plus cation or ions if you wish. Okay, that's are the easy ions. I mean the easy cations. So following are the more difficult ones. So these are this copper, silver, iron, and so on. They belongs to transition metals. I mean, in the right in the middle of the periodic table, and they, of course, they have colors, yes. But then, one thing to talk about is that transition metals, they tend to have so many different kind of ions. For example, copper. They can lose one electron to become copper one ion, or it can even lose one more electron to become copper two. Iron. Okay, there are two kind of copper, copper one and copper two. Okay, you just have to remember these facts. Sorry. Silver. There's only one kind of silver ion, silver plus. One plus. For iron, you have iron two and iron three, and they have different colors as well. See, iron two plus and iron three plus. Okay, at this stage, I would recommend you to just write down this uh, equation again. Try to write as much as you can, and you will memorize it. Okay. Now let's talk about the an anion for a moment. So I told you about chloride, did I? So in this case, it has seven electron on its outermost shell. So it would likely to gain one more. Electrons, much more than losing all seven, right? So gaining one electrons, it becomes the stable octet here. You can see eight. Same thing can be said about fluorine, bromine, and iodine, because they all belong to group seven A. So they form the minus 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 ion, the fluoride ion. The bromide ion and the sulfur, the uh, iodide ion. Oh, there you go. Okay, group six A. Sulfur and oxygen belong to group six. Six will be more likely. We will be more likely to add two more electrons in there. So they will be sulfur sulfide ion. The sulfide ion. An oxide ion. You can call this thing anion. Anion means like it is negative ions. Okay. Once again, please try to write down this reaction. I mean, this kind of uh, equation, and you will eventually remember it. Okay. Okay. Welcome back. In this video, I will tell you how to name inorganic compounds. Like very commonly found in inorganic compounds, and how they are named according to IUPAC or IUPAC system, International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, IUPAC. Okay, so let's talk about the oxide first. I mean, because they are the most commonly found in nature, and also in the textbook. I mean, in the program of your study or whatever. So we have oxide of non-metals, and we have oxide of metals. So metals lie to group one and group two or group three of the periodic the periodic table, and of course non-metals lie to the right. They lie to they lie to the uh, right side of the table. So for example, these things: CO, CO two, MgO. Fe2O3, something like that. But first thing first, to name things, you need to learn rules. So what are the rules here? So basically, for oxide of metals, I mean it's much more simpler. But for non-metal, you have to use the numbering system, and in this case, we use Greek numbers. For example, one mono, di. Tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, 
Nona and Dekka. Right. So to name the oxide of non-metal, you have to use numbers. But oxide of、uh, the metal, you don't have to. Right. For example, this case CO. There are one C and one O. So carbon monoxide. CO2, carbon dioxide equals two. But people will ask me why? Why didn't we have like mono be,、uh, like in here? For example, mono carbon monoxide. Why is not like that? Or mono carbon dioxide. Why? It's not like that. The, the answer is if I put it like that, the name would be too complicated. I mean, it could be too long, and it's not necessary. So that's why they simplify it to be mo carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. Okay. Please be careful with the spelling because、uh, oxide with D sound and oxide or other thing, other thing with it, it means different thing. Okay. No nitrogen monoxide, No two nitrogen dioxide, silicon SiO two silicon dioxide, H two O. There you go. There are two hydrogen at the beginning, so that's why you have to apply numbers now. Dihydrogen monoxide, or we call them water. H two O two. Now there are two in there and the two in there, so you have to use number now. Dihydrogen dioxide, but we commonly call them hydrogen peroxide. This stuff is used for as disinfectant, you know, like to kill bacteria on your wounds. Okay, SO two and SO three. Sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide. And then P two O three, P two O five, this thing with、uh, phosphorus, you will you will always see them in the textbook. I mean, in the program of your study too. So diphosphorus trioxide, diphosphorus trioxide, diphosphorus pentaoxide. But we because like you know, penta and oxide, the A and the O they conflict. So they they basically they will、um, eliminate each other. So pentoxide, not pentaoxide. The same way to here, mono and oxide, mono and oxide becomes monoxide. Okay. All right. You will wonder why and how do we know how to、uh, combine the、uh, element together. The rules is quite simple. You have to know which groups. Or which group they belongs to in the periodic table. For example, hydrogen is with one, so they will be likely to lose one electron. So they will have a plus one plus. So the oxidation state, oxidation number of that is plus one. Oxygen group six, they will be more likely to accept two more. So that's why they will be two minus, two more electrons, two minus. In their ion charge, will be two minus. Then their oxidation number must be minus two. Okay, so in that case, if you look at here, number two will end up being there, and number one will end up being there. So it's like a, it's like a how can I say oblique fashion,、uh, coaxial. So it coaxial fashion. So one will be there and two will be there. The same thing can be said of P two O five. So phosphorus group five. I mean, normally they would lose three to become something like this. Lose three, you see. So that would be P two O three, right? And oxygen will gain two, so become this one. Lose three, gain two. So they should become P two O three, right? But since、uh, there are some special cases when they can jump up, I mean the electrons can jump up to the next energy level. So we will talk about it later. They can be up to plus five in phosphorus. 
So that's why you see plus 5 and minus 2, they end up being like this. Minus 2 here, 2 here, 5 there. In the very coaxial fashion. Alright, so what are these numbers and why they are the way they are? If you look at this example for manganese 4 oxide, you could see that manganese plus 4, oxygen, 2 of them are minus 2. So this molecule must be neutral in charge, which means there are 1 manganese there, 1 times plus 4, and then there are 2 of the minus 2 oxygen. If they plus together and become 0, the molecule is uh, neutral in charge. So same thing here. 5 plus 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 5 times minus 2 is 0. So it's neutral in charge now. So that's the rule. Okay, remember. Coaxial. Okay. You will start to ask me, okay, in this case, why the number 4 does not end up there and number 2 does not end up there to become something like this MN2O4 Why is it not like this? Well, sometimes I think they do exist but because the ratio between 2 and 4 is just basically 1 to 2 so they simplify it to 1 to 2 ratio Okay. Alright, for oxide of metal, it's pretty easy. You can see that they don't even have any numbering at all in the namings. Lithium oxide, even though it has two here, two here, yeah. Potassium oxide doesn't even have numbering at all. Okay, but things become much more complicated when you have the transition metal. Okay. Okay, before we go there, let me recap a bit. Lithium oxide, sodium oxide, potassium oxide, magnesium oxide, calcium oxide, barium oxide. Okay, now time for the transition metal oxide. So iron, because iron, you have iron 2 and iron 3. So now, for the oxide of metal, you need to indicate their uh, oxidation number, I mean oxidation state or oxidation number. So here is iron 2 oxide, here is iron 3 oxide. Copper, you have copper 1 and copper 2, so you have copper 1 oxide and copper 2 oxide. Silver, you have only one silver, so silver oxide, you don't have the number. Magnesium, I'm uh, sorry, manganese. You have manganese 2, manganese 4, manganese 7, or something like that. But in this case, it's a manganese 2 oxide. This is manganese 4 oxide. Do you have any question? Okay, I would recommend you to try to draw, try to write down all of these formula based on your knowledge of the periodic table and which group they belongs to and then try to name them, try to speak out I mean, pronounce their name right, okay? I hope the video was helpful for you I'll see you in my next video, okay? Bye-bye, see you!